Okay, I've got enough this question. So, first thing, what we're going to do is make a diagram. Okay, so this is a straight line. That goes from P to Q to R. Okay, and P to Q is Q.4 kilometers. Q to R is five kilometers. Um, it takes one and a half hours to get from P. No, sorry, one hour to get from P to Q. And a half hours to get from Q to R. Right, so we're going to try and find acceleration. So let's use the CVAP. Okay, what do we know? Well, we know the distance from P to Q. We know that's 2.4. Okay, our initial, initial velocity. We don't know the final velocity. We do know that time is one minute. Okay, so we try and find one of our equations. So let's use S equals VT minus R A T squared. This is because we're going to end up with two unknowns. If we're going to end up with more than one unknown, we know we're going to have to set up some sort of simultaneous equation. So we've got this. So now let's substitute in what we know. We know that 2.4 is going to be equal to the velocity, the final velocity at Q. We know who P to Q is. So that's that. And then we take away from that one half of a times t, and t is equal to one, so that's just going to be a half a. Okay, let's rearrange this. So we've got the vq as a value, as the subject. So vq is equal to 2.4 plus a half a. Now, let's look at q. Now, q r, we're going to use. S equals ut plus r t squared because in the first one we're trying to find the velocity at q. The velocity at q, the final velocity, is also going to be the initial velocity at q. So we're going to have, we're going to have one thing that we can compare with our continuous equation. Okay, so, so we put this in, so we're going to have uh, 11.5. Is equal to VQ. Remember, this is our the initial velocity is the same as the final velocity Q. Okay, times 1.5, that's 1.5 hours, plus a half a t squared. Okay, so into this, what we're going to do, we're going to substitute our VQ. So now we've got. This is going to become 11.5 equal to 2.4 minus half a 1.5 plus half a times 1.5 squared. Okay, and uh, now that means that basically we can rearrange all of this and we get that's equal to 3.6. 1.875 a, and then from that we can find that a is equal to 4.21. Now that's in kilometers per hour. If we want acceleration, we need to convert this into our RSI units. We need it meters per squared, or meters per second per second. Okay, so convert that, and that gives us 3.25 times 10 to the minus. That's A. So now, remember this point about kilometers per hour and meters per second is important because for B, we're trying to work out speed. Okay, and the speed is going to be in meters per second as well. Okay, so speed. Uh, we can go for B, Q again. So let's do our SUVAT thing again. So, P to Q, distance is 2.4. Don't know what U is, use the thing I'm trying to find out. The A, I now know, is 
4.21. Remember, this is in kilometers per hour. And note the time, that's one. So, and we have formula that's going to use T A S. So, S equals U T plus half A T squared. That fits the bill. 2.4 is equal to U times 1, so that's just U, plus a half A T squared. So, T squared is just 1, plus a half A. And we know what A is. So that is going to be 2.105. So u equals 0 0.293. Now remember, this is in kilometers per hour. Right, so now we have to turn that 0 0.293 kilometers per hour times it by. So turn this into meters and then turn it into seconds and that gives me 0 0.0815 meters per second for the speed okay so there's my speed and there's my acceleration okay, so the main the main difficulty here is the fact that we've got more than one number so we have to basically set up a simultaneous equation and you've got to link the final velocity at Q between P and Q and the initial velocity between Q and R to get one value that we can compare. Right, I hope that's clear. Any questions?